Hey guys, welcome to this Easy Maths video. Today we are looking at questions 21 to 25 from the 2019 Junior Maths Challenge. Question 21, the diagram shows a regular hexagon PQRSTU, a square PQVW, and an equilateral triangle VXW. What is the size of angle XVR? Okay, so XVR is this angle here. Well, let's label angles in this diagram that are pretty obvious. So we know VXW is an equilateral triangle. So each of these angles here are going to be 60 degrees. PQVW is a square. So each of these angles are going to be right angles, so they're at 90 degrees. Now, and the other thing that we can work out is what the size of one of the interior angles is going to be. So we can do that by working out what the size of the exterior angle is going to be. So for an exterior angle, we do 360 degrees divided by 6. Since the exterior angles of a polygon add up to 360 degrees, a hexagon has 6 sides. So we do 360 divided by 6 to get the size of each exterior angle. So that's going to give us an answer of 60. So if I draw that here, that would be an angle 60. Because TS is a straight line, straight lines have angles which add up to 180. So we could just do 180 degrees minus 60 degrees, which would give us 120 degrees for this interior angle. Well, that's quite interesting because we can work out what this angle is here. If I draw this, this is a triangle. Q of V. And this angle, well, we know that the total angle of PQR is 120. And that is made up of this triangle VQR and the right angle formed by the square. So to work out this angle, we can just do 120, which is the interior angle, minus 90, which is the angle formed by the square. And that gives us an answer of 30 degrees. So this angle is 30. Now this is a square, so we know that the side PQ is equal to the side VQ. And because PQ is also one of the sides of the hexagon, then this side, QR, is equal to one of the sides of the square. Because PQ, for the square and the hexagon, share a side, right? So that means that these two sides here, VQ and QR, are the same. And if we've got a triangle which has two sides which are equal, then they must have two equal angles, and this is an isosceles triangle. So these two angles are going to be the same. So if we call this angle x, we can work out what x is, since we know that the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So this is going to be 2x plus 30 equals 180 degrees. Subtract 30 from both sides, we get 2x equals 150 degrees. And then divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 75 degrees. So this angle here is 75. So that is the angle QVR. And we're looking for angle XVR. So we say let Y equal angle XVR. Then you should be able to see that XVR plus 60 degrees from the equilateral triangle plus the 90 degrees from the square plus 75 degrees from the isosceles triangle is all going to add up to 360 degrees because we're just forming a circle here. So therefore we can say that y plus 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 75 degrees equals 360 degrees and we can just solve for y. So 90 plus 75 is 165 and 165 plus 60 is 225. So that's y plus 225 degrees equals 360 degrees. Then we can subtract 225 degrees from both sides. So we get y equals 360 degrees minus 225 degrees. And that gives us an answer of 135 degrees. And that is answer D. 
Question 22, in the multiplication shown alongside, T, R, A and P are all different digits. What is the value of R? So the multiplication grid shows that when we take our four digit number T, R, A, P and multiply it by nine, it's gonna give us another four digit number where we have the exact same digits, they're just rearranged to form part. So another way I'm writing this is that trap T, R, A, P when we multiply by 9, it's going to give us a four-digit number. So that's any number which is less than 10,000. Okay, so we can work out a condition for trap, T-R-A-P, and we can do that just dividing through by 9. So we get trap is less than 10,000 divided by 9. So we can work this out using short division. So we say, how many times does 9 go into 1? That's 0. How many times does 9 go into 10? That's 1. So we're going to have a remainder of 1. Then again, a 1 with a remainder of 1. 1 with a remainder of 1. A 1 with a remainder of 1. And that will just keep repeating. So this is equal to 1,111.1 recurring. So we could write this as TRAP is less than 1,112, if we just round that number up. If t equals 0, then we would have a three-digit number. We wouldn't have a four-digit number. So t can't equal 0. That means t will have to equal 1. If trap is less than 1,112 and t can't equal 0, then t has to equal 1. So t does not equal 0 then t equals 1. So what does that mean for r? Well, again, r can only be 0 or 1, but all the digits are different, and t already takes the digit of 1. So therefore, r can only be equal to 0. So we can say when t is 1, r equals 0. And we've got an answer of 0, which is answer A. Question 23, the diagram shows two squares J, K, L, M and P, Q, R, S. The length of J, K is 6 centimetres and that of P, Q is 4 centimetres. The vertex K is the midpoint of side R, S. What is the area of the shaded region? Okay, so what we can do with this question is we can alter the diagram slightly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line here extending the line MJ, which is parallel to the line SP. So these two lines are parallel. And then I can also extend the line PQ, and the extension of this line will be parallel to JK. And these four parallel sides form a square. And what we can say is that this is a right angle. So if we just look at this region now, that I'm shading here, we will end up with a right angle triangle. So let's draw that here. Okay, so here's our right angle. Now on the base of this triangle, well, the length of PQ is four centimeters. The length of JK is six centimeters and K is the midpoint of the smaller square. So from K to S, this bit here, this is gonna be two centimeters as that is half of four centimeters. So J to S would be six minus two, which is four, so that's four centimeters. So this length here is also four centimeters. So the base of this triangle is gonna be four plus four, so this is eight centimeters. And then again, because these parallel sides form a square, this side length must be four centimeters, and we know that JM is six centimeters. So the height of the right angle triangle will be six plus four, which is 10 centimeters. And now we know the area of a right angle triangle, which is a half base times height. So that's a half times eight times 10. So that gives us 40 centimeters squared. But of course, we're trying to find the shade of region in the diagram. And to get that region, all we have to do is take the area of this right angle triangle and subtract it from the area of that smaller square that we created 
with the parallel sides. So the area of the smaller square is just 4 times 4, which is 16 centimeters squared. So therefore, the area of the shaded region is going to be 40 centimeters squared, which is the area of the right angle triangle, the area shaded in yellow, minus the area of that smaller square that we created, which was 16 centimeters squared. And 40 minus 16 is 24 centimeters squared. We have an answer of 24, which is answer B. Question 24, the diagram shows a regular heptagon. Which of these expressions is equal to P plus Q plus R plus S plus T? Okay, so what do we know about this heptagon? Well, it is made up of a five-sided polygon, which is this bit here. And then it is also made up by two smaller triangles here and here. Now, and it should be pretty easy to spot that these two smaller triangles are isosceles triangles, since the side lengths here and here, here and here, are going to be equal, since they are just the sides of the heptagon. So that means that this angle here will also be angle R, and this angle here will also be angle S. If we were to label these two angles, let's call them x, then we could come up with two equations, okay? Because we know that the angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So we could say that q plus r plus x equals 180 degrees, and also that t plus s plus x equals 180 degrees also. Now, because both of these expressions are equal to 180, we can just say that Q plus R plus X equals T plus S plus X. And the X's will just cancel each other out if we subtract X from both sides. So we get Q plus R equals T plus S. Okay, and that's going to be an important result, because when we need to find what P plus Q plus R plus S plus T is, we can just replace S plus T with Q plus R. Okay, so let's work that out. So we're going to have P plus Q plus R plus S plus T, and that's just equal to P plus Q plus R plus Q plus R. And that simplifies to P plus 2Q plus 2R. Now, if you have a look at our answers, our answers are all in terms of Q. So in that case, we're going to need to write P, hopefully in terms of R, and hopefully the R's will cancel out and we're just left with some expression involving Q. So how are we going to work out what our angle P is in terms of R? Well, we've got this smaller triangle here, which is an isosceles triangle made up of two angles of R. Well, this angle here is just going to be 180 minus 2R. Okay, angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees. The other two angles added up to 2R, so the missing angle is 180 minus 2R. Now, that angle is the same as angle P, since these are the interior angles of the heptagon. So we can say that this angle P is also 180 minus 2R. So P equals 180 minus 2R. So now we can just replace P with this expression. So we get 180 minus 2R plus 2Q plus 2R. And that's great because the minus 2R and the plus 2R are going to cancel each other out. And we are just left with 180 plus 2q. And that is answer B. Question 25. The diagram shows the first 15 positive integers arranged in a triangle. These numbers are to be rearranged so that the five integers along each edge 
of the triangle have the same sum. Unlike the example shown, when this is done, what is the greatest possible such sum? Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and generalize this triangle. Hopefully we're going to come up with some formula for the sum. So by the sum, we mean the sum of one of these edges. So that could be this edge, this edge, or this edge. And hopefully we can plug in some numbers from 1 to 15, which will maximize our sum function. So this pyramid, I'm just going to represent with 15 letters. So I'm just going to represent it with the alphabet. So A, B, C... D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, and O. Okay, so that is our pyramid. And the other thing I'm going to say is I'm going to let S be the sum of the edge. Each of these bits highlighted in yellow I'm going to represent S. So using the pyramid that we've just created, we can write three equations. So we could say that S is equal to A plus B plus D plus G plus K. S is equal to A plus C plus F plus J plus O. So that's the first sum. That's the second sum. And then the third sum will be S equals K plus L, plus M, plus N, plus O. And that's this line here. So the other thing we can do is we can take the sum of all the numbers 1 to 15. That would be adding all the numbers from A to O. So I could just write that as the sum of A to O. And we can use a formula for this to sort of speed up the process. So the sum of natural numbers... So if I've got n natural numbers, so I'll go from i equals 1 to n, then the sum of those natural numbers will be equal to a half of n multiplied by n plus 1. So in this case, we're dealing with 15 numbers, so we're going from i equals 1 to 15, and that will be a half of 15 times 15 plus 1, which is 16. Half of 16 is 8, so it's just going to be 15 times 8. So if we work that out, 5 times 8 is 40, 8 times 10 is 80, 0 plus 0 is 0, and 4 plus 8 is 12. So we get 120 for that answer. So the sum of all the numbers is going to be 120. So the sum of a to O equals 120. Then the other thing we can do is we can take these three equations and we can add them. So if we add the left-hand side, we're going to get 3S. And the right-hand side is going to be 2A plus B plus C plus D. Then plus F plus G plus J plus 2K plus L, plus M, plus N, plus 2O. Now, we just worked out that the sum from A to O is 120. So that's A plus B plus C plus all the way up to O equals 120. Right, so we can rewrite this as 3S equals A plus K plus O. Now, that's because there's two multiples of A, two multiples of K, two multiples of O. And then we're going to add 120. There's three unknowns that we're missing, and they are the numbers that are in the centre of the pyramid. So that's E, H, and I. So we're going to subtract E, H, and I. Okay, so that is our formula for adding up all of the sums. So now we can divide 3 by 3. So we get S equals a third of A plus K plus O plus 120 divided by 3, which is 40, minus a third of E plus H plus I. So now this is our formula for the sum, and we're trying to maximise this sum. We're trying to find the greatest possible sum. So in order to do that, the unknowns A, K and O need to be as large as possible. So we need 
max values here. And then we're subtracting one third of the sum of E plus H plus I. So E plus H plus I need to be as small as possible as we are subtracting this result. So this bit here needs to be minimum values. So the largest values that we have possible from 1 to 15, because that is what makes up A to O, will be 13, 14 and 15. So we can say that A plus K plus O equals 13 plus 14 plus 15. And then the smallest numbers from 1 to 15 will be 1 plus 2 plus 3. So we can say that E plus H plus I equals 1 plus 2 plus 3. So 13 plus 14 plus 15 is 42. So that's going to be A plus K plus O equals 42. And then E plus H plus I equals 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. So now we just need to substitute these results into our function for S. So that is going to be S equals a third of A plus K plus O, which is 42, plus 40 minus a third of E plus H plus I, which is 6. So that is S equals 42 divided by 3, which is 14, plus 40 minus a third of 6, which is 2. 14 plus 40 is 54, minus 2 is 52. And we have an answer for 52, which is answer D. So that is our final answer.